Hello, it is another good evening here in Ohio. It is cold outside here in November. It is uh, it is the week of Thanksgiving here in the United States. That's going to be later this week on Thursday. <clears throat> so anybody who's going to be doing that, I hope you enjoy your time with your family. Friday is Black Friday, and I will not be out and about at the stores, so just forget it. Not going to happen. <laughs> Please, just uh, be careful. And, um, but let's, let's wind it back down to what we're going to talk about tonight. What do we have going on tonight? Last week, we had dance craze, all the various dances over the centuries, centuries, decades, probably more like it. And, uh, tonight we're going to rhyme again with school days. Let's talk about this. School days, specifically my school days. Um, <laughs> school. I had a contentious, that's a good word, a contentious relationship with school when I was a kid. When I was a child, you would say, into being a young adult. And I never quite got over it. There was never a time while I was attending public school where I enjoyed it. I mean, I had these brief moments where I had some good, you know, events here and there, like I was in the marching band and I did some things here and there and I won some competitions and some smart things, which I'll get to later. But um, as a whole, I disliked school. Now, for, for anyone out there with their children listening, I don't want to turn your children off from going to school. School is still a very important thing. It's good to be educated. Education is important. Learning how to do math and, and, and science, learning about the world, learning about history, even though, you know, sometimes it's difficult to find good history in history books in some public schools. Just, you know, the Internet's there to help fill in the gaps and, and, and do some things like that. But, um... I don't want anybody to get the wrong impression that I would tell you that school is a bad thing. Because it isn't. School is a good thing for the most part. But me and school just didn't get along. And perhaps it was destiny. or Perhaps it was just something in the water. I don't know. But I didn't like school. And it started for me... All the way back in kindergarten, believe it or not, when I went to school, I didn't go to a preschool. I didn't go to anything like that. I went to kindergarten as my first uh, my first encounter with, with the public school system. And I've never been to private school. It's all been public school. So I can't speak for that. But... Um, I went to school in Pennsylvania. I've lived in Ohio my whole, most of my whole life, but we, I lived in Pennsylvania as a child, and that's where we went to school. My older sister had been going to school for a little while, maybe a year or two. I don't remember the age gap between me and all my sisters. It's, it's anywhere from a year to two years, you know, that kind of thing, here and there to three years. Um, but my sister had, had been going to school, and I didn't know what to make of it at first when the idea was presented to me. I thought it sounded interesting, but I was never particularly interested in actually going. (laughs) And that's probably a sign of things to come. So, um first day of school and I don't remember every exact detail okay so I'm, I'm gonna get some things kind of hazy I just remember when when my school when we had kindergarten they had the, they had split kindergarten classes there was a morning class and an afternoon class and each one was a half day you didn't start taking full days of school until you got into first grade this was, I think, to help ease the kids in and not to overwhelm them. 
Um, and my my bus stop was the farthest from the school. So I was like one of the first people picked up and one of the last people dropped off along the route. Okay? And um, so I went to school. You know, I, I don't even remember all the exact things that happened at school. I just remember I went. You know, it was okay. It wasn't, you know, the worst experience I'd ever had. But when I got home, my parents asked, what do you think? How do you feel about school? And I remember telling them, oh, it was okay, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to go again. Because I didn't know. I was, a, I was a kid. I didn't know it wasn't optional. And I said, yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to go, though. And they said, well, you have to. And they explained to me that now that I was in school, I had to go to school every day. And that set the tone for the entirety of my school career, I guess you could call it. I don't know if you'd call it a career or what you'd call it, experience. I don't know. Um, I, I did not always get along with my teachers. I did not always get along with my classmates. I tended to have a poor attitude. I tended to not want to do what I was told. When I did do the work, and I did learn a lot, and I did do a lot of work, I was very good at it. I was a smart kid. Um, as I would tell people nowadays, I was, I was then and I am now. Not to come off like I'm bragging or anything. This is just kind of the way it is. I was and am too smart for my own good. <laughs> I'm I'm smart enough to know that I can do certain things and to work out problems and to do all this other kind of stuff and uh to get out to like get away with things. But um I wasn't smart enough to know that you shouldn't do that. <laughs> I wasn't smart enough to know better. I probably should have. I got into a lot of trouble at school. <clears throat> I got into a lot of trouble at school. I remember, and again, I am not the best role model for school for your kids, so please, I'm not going to tell every single story about the bad things I did when I was in school, because some of it's, I, I don't want to get into it. It's, <laughs> it's not entertaining. And some of you out there would go, shame on you. And that's not what I'm going for. But um I remember once it was it was in one of the early grades it was somewhere between first second and third grade something like that it wasn't I wasn't no very far along and we had a school nurse he was a male school nurse which you know that's not a big deal who cares what the gender was right but he had a certain particular last name and I'm not going to get into it because it's not really important and I don't want to like bring up anybody's names in case somebody says, Oh, I know that person, or I know this person, or, oh, and I don't want to embarrass anybody. But he had a last name that was interesting. It wasn't one of your regular last names. And I remember there was a day we were supposed to go on a field trip. Okay, we were supposed to go on a field trip. And me and, and all the rest of the kids we were hanging out, I got, we'd had our permission slips all signed because your parents had to give you permission to go and all, and all the kind of I don't even remember where we were go, supposed to go. I just know that I did not get to go because one of the kids at my little designated table, because you were at these tables, you weren't always at desks. You were sometimes at tables and, and whatnot. They tried creative ways to, you know, keep your, your the education fun and interesting and keep you engaged because kids have short attention spans, right? And uh, one of the kids around the table with me was leaning back in his chair and he started making fun of this this nurse's last name. And I didn't have any relationship with this with with the guy. I didn't know him. He was just the school nurse. Like if I didn't feel good, I'd go down there and he'd say, "Okay, we'll go lay down and see if you feel better. If not, we'll call your mom, whatever." You know, I didn't have you know, I I didn't have a friendship with him. I didn't have any particular like closeness with him at all. But for some reason I got I got oh, I got irrationally angry about this kid making fun of his name. 
So he's leaning back in his chair, and he's laughing about it. And so I pushed him, and he fell in his chair. He didn't hurt himself. You know, he didn't get any, you know, I'm sure it wasn't pleasant, but he was all right. But the teacher saw it, and the teacher kept me from going to the uh, the field trip. I had to stay in the classroom doing schoolwork all afternoon. I didn't get to go. <laughs> I didn't get to go. But that was was an example of some of the things that I did. I had particular outlooks on what I thought was right and wrong, and I wasn't about to put up with anybody else who broke those rules of mine, and uh, that got me in an awful lot of trouble. And I got grouchy about things, too. Like, um... We had, uh, we had a special portion of of classes for the kids who were exceptionally I don't want to say gifted or exceptionally smart because it's not always like it's not straight up smarts but the kids who excelled in certain areas better than everybody else who maybe had some better natural talent with with their minds not like physically active things just you know they they seemed to be able to get the schoolwork easier, and all the school answers came to them easier, and they were just all around better students than everybody else. And it was called enrichment. And so the, if they thought that you had that little spark of like, oh, yeah, you, you might be a good fit for this, they'd pull you aside and let you take these special classes to give you bonus schooling, bonus education, right? And to nurture your, your creativity and different things. And my sister had been in it, and I knew it was, I was always like, oh, this is for the smart people, and I'm a smart person, and I want to go, mm, I want to go, and they would never seem to pick me. And the one time they picked me, because it's always like a trial basis, they pick you, you go hang out with them, and they observe you, and, and then they make notes, and they decide whether you can continue with the program or not. And they didn't keep me in the program. Because I, classically, as many report cards would say over the many years later, I did not apply myself. I I had an, an attitude where I knew I was intelligent. And I felt that made me better than a lot of people. It didn't. It didn't. But at the time, as a kid, I had a big chip on my shoulder. I felt I was so much smarter than everybody else. I didn't even need to be in school because I knew so much. I read books and I could do my homework real fast and when I even bothered to do it because a lot of times I didn't and I got into a lot of trouble. And uh, I just, you know, I had a poor attitude about it. I didn't give it the chance that it probably deserved. And so that led to me getting picked on a lot in school. I had a lot of bullies in school because I was kind of a mean kid and, and people would see that and they'd be like, yeah, and they'd pick on me for different things. And, uh, that was school. There was another time later on, I don't remember what grade this was in, I think this was in, it's been called junior high before, and in my schooling we called it middle school. There was the elementary school, which was grades one through five, I think. Then there was middle school, which was grades six through eight. Then there was the high school, which was grades 9 through 12. And in the middle school, there was a time where apparently there were issues in the lunchroom. Like, the, uh, they were either fights or there was something. I don't remember what was going on. There was some kind of discipline problem among the student body. And so they started giving everybody assigned seats at lunchtime. And they didn't care who your friends were. They didn't care, like, whatever. They would just assign you where they thought you fit. And I hated it. I always wanted to go sit with my friends, but I couldn't. I had to sit with random people that I didn't really care for too much. Not that they were bad. It was just I was had my bad attitude, right? So when they instituted the assigned seats, I would go stand at the entrance of the lunchroom and hang out there for the ent- entire lunch period. I wouldn't sit in any of the seats. I'd just go stand there. And when they'd ask me what I was doing, I'd say, this is a silent protest. I'm protesting the, the assigned seats. Because, <laughs> you know, I was 
I had a bad attitude about things, and that's not how you should handle certain things that you don't like. <laughs> but that's what I did. Um, <laughs> Parent-teacher conferences were, fi- were fun because all the stuff that I wouldn't tell my parents about uh, what happened during a school day when I would get in trouble and whatnot, the teachers would then tell my parents and catch them up on it, and then they would find out that I had not been telling them things. Um, or hiding report cards and things. Pro tip, kids, do not try to hide those things from your parents. <laughs> Just either be good in school, and if but if you're not going to, at least tell your parents the truth. Be like, yeah, I did this. You know, don't don't hide it from your parents. It's worse. <laughs> it's much worse. <laughs> like I said, I'm not the best role model as far as school is concerned. So don't be like me in school. I hope you, everyone out there, all the kids, enjoy your schooling. And if you don't, I hope there's things you can do to help make it easier for you. Because back in my day, we didn't have, back in my day, we didn't have some of the extra programs to make them easier for students. But we didn't have, like, the internet was a new thing for us. We didn't have cell phones, smartphones. We didn't have anything like that. We didn't have tablets. The computers in school were connected on a local network, but half the time they didn't have the internet, and then when they did have the internet, half of it was restricted, Um, which, you know, is fair, because kids will explore wherever. Um, And, uh, but yeah, we didn't have some of the, some of the, the ways that kids cope with things these days. Of course, we also didn't have all the pressures of social media that we do now so things are a bit different and uh, in my experience in modern children's experience in school I'm sure both equally fraught with difficulties in their own way but that was school (laughs) I had some teachers that I liked I had some teachers that I disliked. I had a teacher, I don't remember what grade it was. I think it might have been sixth grade. I was big into reading heavy, heavy books around my middle school time. And when I mean heavy books, I mean like thousand page novels. I would read a thousand page novels, no sweat. I was a big reader, and I don't want to show off. I don't want people to think, oh, look at this guy. He was able to read so much. I'm just saying. That's just how it was. It's just a fact. And so I would take these big books, and I would read in class, which you're not really supposed to. You're supposed to be doing your work and whatnot. But most of the time, all the in-class work, I would do all the in-class work. It was the homework I didn't like to do, but I would do all the in-class work. Because I had this this thought that, you know what, while you're in school, you do school. When you're not at school, you're at home, you're at home. Don't do your school at home. But, you know, they would always sell me homework, and that's how it is. <laughs> so, of course, my outlook didn't matter in that regard. But, so I'd read these books, and there was at least, there's one teacher, and I would always, like, I would do well on tests. I would do well in the class on the things that I needed to do well in. And so I wasn't a problem student academically. But I would show up and I would read my books. And at least one point, like, there were other kids that complained about it. Like, Why is he allowed to do all this other stuff? Blah, blah, blah. And the teacher was like, well, he gets all of his work done. He does his work. He gets pets, passing grades. And he does this. So I'm not going to really push him too hard. And I had a few teachers. Very few. But I had a few that recognized that I was that kind of a person that didn't like to be micromanaged. That if you let me go on my pace, I would do all the work. I'd get it all done. I'd pass the tests if it was something that, you know, I knew something about. And they would just let me run on autopilot a lot of the times. As long as I was doing the work. When I wasn't, then I'd be in a lot of trouble. But when I did the work... And in those classes where they allowed me that kind of freedom of movement a little bit, I would I would do very well. I would do very well. There was a there was a class. It was I. I don't know what I don't remember what it was called. 
it was like social studies sort of things, which is like uh, politics and history and governments and um, society and, and different things like that. You know, there's a lot of parts to social studies, right? And this teacher, she would always like to change things up. You would go in one day, all the desks would be a certain position, and they'd stay that way for like a few weeks. Then she'd change the direction of the desks. And I didn't like that. I didn't like it at all. So I would go in and I would reorient my desk to be different from all of the other desks. If they were all pointing towards the front of the class, I would turn mine sideways. If they were all at a slant pointing towards one corner of the class, I would point mine at the opposite slant. (laughs) I would just constantly like... And at first she tried to she tried to fight me on it. And and you know, we butted heads a bunch of times. Eventually though, because I always turned my stuff in, I always passed the class. Eventually she uh she just let me get away with it because I was passing the class. And um Now I can't say that about every single there were a couple subjects I just, no matter what, and I'm still not great at them today. A couple of, of classes where I just, mm, I couldn't get along with the teacher, I couldn't get along with the subject matter. Um, one of those was algebra class. Algebra is getting into relatively advanced mathematics for people who don't know what algebra is, okay? After the addition, subtraction, all that other good stuff of dividing, multiplying, you get into algebra, which is like the find x, x plus y equals z. Find the numbers, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm still, I'm no good at that. I, I just, I can't, my brain cannot comprehend this stuff, no matter how much I tried. And I tried hard after a while. I eventually gave up because I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I gave it as my I gave it everything I could, but I couldn't get it, which is too bad because I'm a huge fan of things like quantum physics and mechanics and stuff like that. I love those kind of subjects, but the, all the all the science equations, all the actual like work to figure out how the things do what they do, is way over my head. I'll never understand it. I'll have to trust the people writing up the, the mathematics about it and hope that they're correct because I can't figure it out. But algebra, I got through, and the way that they did it, it was in stages. They did something called algebra half, which is some some schools called it pre-algebra, which is like an introduction. It's not the full-on. And I did okay at that. I don't know. I didn't do exceptionally well, but I did, did okay at that. And then I got to Algebra 1, which was the first, like, this is Algebra. This is this is what you do. And man, I was terrible at it. I was so awful. I was so bad at it. I was so bad that one summer they thought I had failed the class. And in order to to continue on to the next grade, I had to take summer school. Because if you don't have all your passing classes, you, you can't continue on with everybody else. You'll you'll never... If they keep pushing you into more and more advanced subject matter, you'll never get it, and you'll just get further and further behind. So they wanted to make sure you understood. So they put me in summer school and gave me, like, extra work and stuff about it to try to figure it out. And after the first week, they pulled me back out because they said, oh, okay, well, you didn't actually fail. You got close to failing, but you didn't quite fail. So you you don't have to come back. And I was like, oh my goodness. Dodged it there. But then they wanted to put me in another algebra class the next year. And I was like, no. I discussed it with my folks. I was like, can you let me pick my classes? Because every year you had to pick with your parents' help. This was high school level stuff. You had to pick the classes that you would take. And you had to pick a certain number of certain subjects to make sure that you had enough credits to graduate you couldn't just pick all gym classes or something you know you had to pick a math class of some kind a science oriented class of some kind um and some like an english or a a literature class or something you had to you'd pick a variety of subjects to get enough to graduate it might sound complicated 
to younger listeners, but that's, you, you'll get used to it. You'll figure it out. And so I, I told my folks, I was like, I don't, I can't do algebra. I just can't. I don't, I don't want to do it anymore. It, it's hurting my brains. It, it just makes me feel bad. Can I pick an easier class? And they finally relented. And so I took a business mathematics class, which a lot of people looked down on as like, oh, that's the, that's the math for people who aren't smart. <clears throat> who aren't smart. That's the, the math for the people who, who can't do anything else. But it's all about like balancing your checkbook and going to the store and figuring out the price of items with tax and all kinds of real world stuff that's really important that they don't tell you about. Like there's all these great college courses that they want you to take in, in regular school. But there's a lot more that you need to know to get through everyday life. Like how much money I can spend on my gas tank for my car and how much of this and, and uh, you know, it, I got much more out of that. And that was, it was an absurdly easy class for me. Whereas algebra was so difficult and gave me such headaches. Business math was, was so ridiculously easy that every day I would go in she would the teacher would give us and this was the teacher who'd moved the desks around who I would always be sideways okay so she knew me already she did double duty on these classes she'd give you assignments but she wouldn't give you your grade until the end of of basically the month it was like monthly chunks you wouldn't worry about your grade until report card time and so what I would do because I was that kid, I would go in and I would either read a book or I would put my head down and do nothing every day. Just collecting all the sheets she gave me, marking them in the book where I was supposed to do them. I'd wait. And then the last couple days before like the final quizzes and things, I'd do all the work because it was all super easy and it took like 10 minutes. I would do the entire month's worth of work turn it all in and get a passing grade. <laughs> and the other kids, they hated it. Oh, they complained about it all the time. They would see me with my head down. They're like, why does he get to do that? And they'd be mad. Because there were a lot of kids in there that were that were in there not because they weren't smart enough to do other things, but because they had been troublemakers, kind of like me. got a reputation as a troublemaking class. So they were in there just so that they could have an easy class to pass, which is kind of an unfortunate outlook, but that's how things were sometimes. But the teacher would be like, because he gets all of his work done. He passes all of his work. He gets good grades. And in that class, I did. In that class, I did. The other class I had problems with, and this was an elective class. When you're, when you're going to, when I was going to school, there was a, a, a series of classes that you could take to fill out your schedule. Because again, you couldn't just take all gym classes and all this and all that. You had to take elective classes. And I had like band classes and things like that. One of the classes I took was Spanish class. And I'm no good with, with other languages. I'm terrible with other languages. I, I can't get the syntax. I can't get the cogitation. All those other big terms. I I was terrible at Spanish. I knew I still know some very basic words, but there was no way I can get in a conversation with anyone who's a fluent Spanish speaker or even anyone who has properly learned Spanish who isn't fluent. I still can't talk to them <laughs> in Spanish. I just can't. And uh I I was very poor in those classes. I got very low grades and eventually I stopped taking them. Because it just doesn't, wasn't going to work. Now, for for you kids today, those are very good classes to take. Because there are a lot more Spanish-speaking people in the United States than there were at the time. It hasn't been very long. In my neighborhood alone, just here, I have... Four of my closest neighbors are all Spanish-speaking families. 
and I'm not saying that in a good or bad way. Like, I, you know, I'm, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just saying they all, they're native Spanish speakers. And I, I have difficulty, like, asking, hey, can you move your car? Can you do this? I'm trying to go through or whatever. You know, I'm just trying to be friendly. I, I can't always speak to them. And they don't always speak fluent English because, you know, maybe they haven't been in the country for very long or maybe they just, you know... Just because people move here doesn't mean they need to give up their native language, right? And maybe their whole life they've only spoken their native language with only little bits of of others here and there. So it's difficult to communicate. It's easier if you are the one who is able to take the step and be like, Hey, I learned some of your language. Not, you know, I'm not as fluent as you because you're a native speaker. But hey, we can have a bit of a conversation and I can help you with things and you can help me with things. Just to be polite, because I can't do that, and it, it's it's a definite hindrance for me. I should have done better in school. I should have. <clears throat> but um, and I got more school stories. I'm not going to go on and on and on because I've already filled up my primary time slot with stories. But school, please do better than I did in school, because I. Again, I felt I was too good for school because I was so smart, and uh, it has been probably to my detriment. I did learn a lot, and I do know a lot. You know, I, I graduated, I got my diploma, which was important. I didn't drop out of school. But uh, I didn't get as much out of it as I could have. So, and... Uh, and it's strange because my daughter is homeschooled. We homeschooled her because around here, when she was supposed to go to school, is right when all the, the virusy stuff was going to happen. And I'm not going to get into a lot of the reasons why. Just that there were also some things in the schools, like there was some there was some violence in the local schools, and there's di- there were a bunch of different things going on here. And we were like, well, it's just going to be easier if we do it here at home. And we're and I'm we're doing our best. It's it's not I. I I don't know if it's anywhere near as good as a, a good elementary school education. I hope so. I hope she's learning a lot. Because I'm, I'm doing my best here. And I don't do as much as I should. But um, I, I wanted her to have a public school experience that was better than mine. Because mine was terrible. At least in my opinion. You know, mine was pretty awful. But I wanted hers to be better. Because you should be able to enjoy school. You should be able to go and enjoy learning, enjoy hanging out and meeting people, you know, and being in a social environment. So if you're out there and you're going to school and you're having difficulties, you know, just do your best. Talk to your parents about it. You know, figure it out. Not everybody is going to enjoy school, and that's fine. I didn't. But if you do the best you can, you'll get through it. You'll get your diploma. And it'll be beneficial to you in the long term. It definitely will. <clears throat> but that's all I got for that. That's that's my, my special speech of the evening. Next week, because this is episode 39. The dog's over there coughing and wheezing. She's upset. She's like, I can't believe it. Um, next week is episode 40. And I am going to be pre-recording that episode the day before on Sunday and then during this time slot on Monday is when I'm going to put it up I'm going to have a short intro by me with the intro music and all that other good stuff and then I'm going to play the pre-recording it's episode 40 it's the last episode of the season of season 2 and it is called Bad Jokes B as in Bob Cat Bad Jokes and it's just going to be me and a mystery guest that you will hear on the recording telling bad jokes to each other back and forth. And I don't mean bad like dirty jokes or jokes that you have to cover your ears for or cover your kids' ears for. They're all going to be family-friendly. Bad jokes. And that'll be the end of Season 2. And then I will take a month off, as I do. After every season now, it's becoming tradition. And after that month, I will be back with season three of Let's Talk About This.
And we are going to talk about this. Guaranteed. So I'm looking forward to that. It should be a great time. I hope you folks have enjoyed Season 2. It has been fun. Lots of ideas for Season 3. All kinds of stuff to talk about. In the meantime, go to school. Enjoy. And if you can't enjoy, at least do your best. Learn some things, right? Use your brain.